schooner. She was a vital part of the Chesapeake Bay's history, and she's back now. In the first of his three-part series, Mark Mooney introduces us to Victory and her remarkable crew. She slipped into harbor three weeks ago without fanfare. But the three-masted schooner Victory Chimes is a national treasure, the only Chesapeake Bay ram still sailing. The ram plied local waters from the late 19th century to the middle of this century. She carried timber and brick, the materials that built and rebuilt Chesapeake Bay towns. While Baltimore barely stirs this early morning, the Victory Chimes is alive with the sounds of deck seamanship. The reason for this apparent amount of concern for the coil isn't just to make it look right. These things have to work. And unlike a modern vessel where you can get away with it because it's a little bit too short, they have to be coiled in a very time-honored tradition. The ship came from Maine and is sailing to Duluth, Minnesota. Her owner hopes she'll do there what the Constellation has done for the Inner Harbor, attract tourists. Steve Cobb is skipper, a Yankee from Maine with more than 20 years sailing experience. He and a tugboat captain talk the sailor's lingo of slurred words. Listen carefully if you're a land lover. I'll, I'll take your line on that and then keep my hawser on the bow. How's that sound? That makes sense. Makes all the sense in the world. As long as there's no, not much wind or the wind is yeah. fair. If the wind's like this, I, yeah, I'm playing it right out there. Yeah, I think, I think that'll be fine. Yeah. We can work it out one way or another. The old black dog will help. Yes, <laughs> if he would uh, ever get up. No, I mean, he's having a rough morning this morning. Yeah, not on Baltimore last night. Yeah, no, well, all those lady dogs down to Bell Point. But yeah. You keep them busy. They will indeed. The deck work is done. It's time to get underway. Tomorrow, we take you back in time to witness the majesty of a 19th century windjammer. Prepare for peace and solitude. A life free of noise. Save the wind whipping through sails. We'll sail to the eastern shore. It's a nostalgia cruise. This is one of the last time these sails will be hoisted on the Chesapeake Bay as a piece of Bay Maritime history moves on. Mark Mooney, News 11. Part two tomorrow. We hope you'll join us then. A lot of work. Beautiful yeah. ship. Sure is. That's our uh, 5.30 report. We thank you for joining us. News 11 at 6 is next. We hope you'll stay with us for that. Good night. The raw materials used to build towns around the bay, and she has shuttled passengers across the bay. She is the Victory Chimes, a ship that played a vital role in Maryland's history. Well, after spending 35 years in Maine, she is back in Baltimore. Tonight, in part two of their series, Mark Mooney and photographer Chuck Cochran take us along as they cast off aboard the Victory. She's been seaworthy almost 90 years, from Grover Cleveland to Ronald Reagan, sailing waters as turbulent as the history of her time. The Victory Chimes has been around so long, she's had two lives. First a Chesapeake Bay cargo ship, then an historical cruise ship on which passengers today pay a premium for the privilege of hoisting her sail. This one was, was the heavy hauler on the bay, but this, this is the type of vessel that also built the bay, quietly and without a lot of fanfare, prosaically. If pretty is as pretty does, then the Chesapeake Bay Ram must approach beauty. Other schooners have been more nimble, but none more sturdy. Still, the Victory Chimes is the only example of her kind left. The 34 other rams that once roamed the bay are gone forever. They're laying bleached bones on the shores of Herring Bay and, and uh, up the, uh, the Nanticoke and, and all around where, where they were finally pushed up on the mud when they weren't, it wasn't worth it to maintain them anymore. How did she survive when others couldn't? Possibly through persistent, tedious deck work. For deck hands, a labor of love. Not a chore, but a historical mission. It's one of the few places on earth where I could be happy cleaning brass and swabbing decks. The Victory oh, Chimes commands attention wherever she sails. Whether from yeah. the shiny deck of the replica ship Mystic Clipper. They're dipping their ensign to it. Or from the tarp of a Hobie cat. You have to see her from afar to appreciate the full measure of her sails. She seems at one with the bay, but in just two weeks, the Victory Chimes is scheduled to set sail for the fresh waters of Lake Superior and Duluth, Minnesota. 
course, certainly, I realize that this is really part of the Chesapeake history. Of course, she's a Chesapeake Ram. She was born here. And yes, I feel bad about taking her away. But will she sail away? Will we let this majestic ship that helped build our Chesapeake Bay towns leave us forever? The answer tomorrow in our final report. Anchored somewhere off the eastern shore of Maryland, Mark Mooney, News 11. <laughs> Great report nice. and some beautiful yeah. pictures by photographer Chuck Cochran. Yeah, we joke about uh, being a tough assignment. You do have to work on that. Oh, no question about there, it. Though. That's our report at 5.30. Thanks for joining us. News 11 at 6, coming up next. Good night. How about Back to the Future star Michael J. Fox in a movie entitled Born in the USA? That's exactly what's happening. The flick, which begins filming this summer, will be a family drama based on the Springsteen single. And yes, the boss will write at least one new song for that project. Well, she was built 85 years ago in the proud shipbuilding port of Bethel, Maryland, and spent most of her life plying the waters of the Chesapeake. A lot of people remember the Victory Chimes and feel an emotional attachment to her, but she could be leaving Maryland in two weeks. In the last part of his series, Mark Mooney says there is a cloud over the future of that historic treasure. It's 0700, time to shove off as the bay comes to life. The anchor has to be drawn up by motor. It is one of the few mechanized components to the Victory Chimes. Welcome to day two of our nostalgia cruise. The wind has picked up, and it should be a good day for sailing. Well, the wind's varying. Pretty much between 10 and 15 knots. I'd say right now it's about, what? It's about 15, just about out of the southwest. And we're going along about 7 knots which is pretty good for this, this vessel. The skipper charts our course for the last day of what may be the last Chesapeake Bay cruise of the Victory Chimes. Scuttlebutt on deck now turns to the question of where she'll sail next. Her owner wants to home port Victory in Minnesota in the fresh waters of Gichigumi. It's an unpopular decision among some well, crew members. Uh, fresh water isn't as good a preservative as salt water, and she's been in salt water all her 85 years. If the Ram Schooner was a prosaic ship in its heyday, its near extinction today makes victory an extraordinary sight, sparking fire in the hearts of sailors. I'd like to be on that boat, sailing that boat someplace. I think she belongs here in the bay. She was built here. She was designed for the bay. She's, uh, she's absolutely perfect large sailing boat for the bay. With the board up, she only draws seven and a half feet that she can claw her way up to windward in, in flat water and make it anywhere in the bay. But the Victory Chimes is not some kind of tax-exempt museum. For her owner, she is a business investment. Still, he's not ruling out Baltimore as home port. If I uh, were to get good vibes from people in the business community, uh, you know, I'd probably consider it. Uh, I just didn't think we'd be as popular as we are uh, because there's so many ships around. She's the only ram schooner left and i think that the this remaining ram schooner would have a function here in the bay sophocles said old age and the wear of time teach many things if she stays we have much to learn from the victory chimes with photographer chuck cochran i'm mark mooney reporting on the chesapeake bay beautiful isn't it no question about it. by the way just so there's no misunderstanding the victory chimes was built in uh, bethel delaware right like i said bethel maryland Chimes will be at the Inner Harbor, by the way, for at least uh, two more weeks, so get down there and take a look at it. It's probably worth the trip. No question it is. That's our report at 5.30. We'll see you next for News 11 at 6. Good night.